And welcome to the Bright Side, friends. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have comments, questions, success stories you'd like to share, we love hearing from you. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. For a one-time $30 fee, you can be in business for yourself. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for information. Or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and our approaching 1,000 four- and five-star reviews at Truth reviewed.com truthreview.com we'll get your calls uh in our second segment we have a guest coming up in our third segment or actually we have a couple of guests hopefully if we get them on We're having a little bit of difficulty getting them on uh their website is transcodes.com jeff casper and jonah brindis will be with us jeff and jonah uh on their website talk about the deeper aspects of self-growth consciousness energy and healing especially focusing on the inner child there's so many ways that we can access our healing powers. You know, we talk a lot about nutrition, of course, and I'm a big believer in, under, in the power of nutrition and the power of biochemistry, but the uh, more abstract energies, the mind energies and our consciousness and uh, our psychological issues, our psychological traumas play such an important role in how we respond to healing or how we don't respond to healing, how we respond to the world, how healthy or not healthy we are. And that's why I believe if we're going to really, if we're going to really emphasize being healthy and having uh, longevity, having a having high quality of life, it is just leaving health on the table. It's leaving power on the table to not take advantage of these abstract kinds of ideas that we've been talking about on the brights that I've been talking about personally in my presentations forever since I started anyway, and uh, and uh, that I've been talking on the bright side now, and we've been talking about on the bright side for probably the last few months. We've had some uh, really interesting spiritual guests. We talk astrology. We talk spirituality. And today we'll talk about the inner child and self-growth consciousness, energy, and healing with Jeff and Jonah. Their website is transcodes.com. Transcodes.com. We'll get your calls. Next segment, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. All right. So we've been talking about this really interesting distinction between fat and water, fatty uh, lipophilic nutrients, fat-loving nutrients, and watery nutrients. These play a, this distinction plays a really important role if we're going to understand how to leverage nutrition, especially the fats. The watery nutrients, they're important, the B-complex and vitamin C uh, and some of the amino acids. Those are definitely important in the world of essential nutrients. But the fatty nutrients, those are really where we have a lot of power for a couple of reasons. First of all, fatty nutrients are stored. Secondly, fatty nutrients are complicated and they require a lot of processing from the gallbladder and the pancreas, even the stomach, the liver, the intestine. A lot of systems have to be working pristinely and perfectly in order for us to really take advantage of the power of fatty nutrients. And as we age, as we get older, as the, uh, as the impact of nutritional deficiencies and poor living and bad eating uh, start to accrue over time, it's the fatty nutrients, it's the absorption of the fatty nutrients that becomes compromised the most. And because of the really important relationship between the aging process and the fatty nutrients, it's really, if, you're gonna, if we're going to focus on anti-aging, if we want to reverse the aging process, or at least slow down the aging process, if we don't want to uh, age at, at an accelerated pace, we really have to start to leverage, first understand, and then leverage uh, fats and fat absorption, especially when it comes to the skin, by the way. And I've been in the skin business for many years. And I always say, when people have problems with the skin or when they want to know about how they can nutriate for skin health, I say, think fats. And when I say fats, I mean essential fats, I mean fatty vitamins, and I mean phytonutrients. Essential fats being essential fatty acids, fatty vitamins being DEEK, and fatty nutrients being zillions. I don't even know how many there are. Probably tens of thousands of different fatty nutrients or phytonutrients that are found in uh, fruits and vegetables and herbs. These fatty nutrients, these phytonutrients, well, not, first of all, I'd say not all phytonutrients are going to be fatty. There are minerals, electrolytes and such uh, that are in herbs and vegetables and fruits that are important. 
Of course, the structured water is important in uh, fruits and vegetables. But the fatty, the, uh, many of the fatty nutrients, a large proportion of the, of the uh, phytonutrients are fatty. And you, it's, you don't necessarily think of a cucumber as being fatty. You don't necessarily think of a piece of celery as being fatty. You don't necessarily think of a pear or an apple as being fatty. But they are. Yeah, they don't have a lot of fats in them. And most of the fats are in the peels. And this is why the peels are so darn important. And this is why if you're eating apples, you don't want to peel the apple and then eat that solid mass of sugar in the inside. It's not just sugar, but that solid mass in the inside. I still see folks peeling their cucumbers or peeling their apples or pe peeling their various uh, fruits and vegetables and then eating the stuff in the middle. The good stuff is in the peel, and the good stuff in the peel tends to be fatty, and the fatty nutrients require a healthy gallbladder, healthy intestine, healthy pancreas, healthy liver, and even a health, to a certain extent anyway, a healthy stomach. So these fatty nutrients, these fatty vitamins, these essential fatty acids, these phytonutrients play a major role in anti-aging, in growth, in repair, in stress management, and nothing's going to accelerate your aging process faster than deficiencies in these nutrients, whether those deficiencies are due to intake, that is you're not taking them, or malabsorption. And this is a, just an iconic example of how understanding this distinction between water and fats can help us stay healthy and improve our longevity. When we understand the distinction and the contrast between the two, we can start paying attention to fat-absorbing machinery. And that includes the gallbladder, by the way. I'm still, if you go on the internet and you talk about, and you, read, uh, you search gallbladder and longevity, or you search uh, how, can I, how well can I live without a gallbladder, the medical strategy or the medical, uh, medical idea, medical philosophy, is that you're fine without a gallbladder. Not true. The medical philosophy is that you can live an equal quality of life with a gall, without a gallbladder as you can with a gallbladder. Well, partially true, but you've got to pay really, really close attention if you've had your gallbladder taken out to how well you're processing foods. That's where bile comes in. That's where lecithin granules come in. That's where digestive enzymes come in. And pancreatic enzymes, for that matter. Stomach enzymes and pancreatic enzymes and even intestinal enzymes. That's where well-rounded nutritional uh, uh, dietary supplement, uh, enzyme dietary supplement comes in like the uh, ultimate enzymes from longevity. And it's, this is also, by the way, where a well-rounded nutritional supplement program can be important. Most multivitamins do not contain enough fatty nutrients. And I would say, venture to say that even if uh, people know about the importance of nutrition, many people, if not most people, who know about the power of nutrition are using a multivitamin and expecting that to get them their nutrition. Well, very unlikely, especially when it comes to fats, especially when it comes to essential fatty acids. By the way, this is one of the reasons why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is such an excellent and important and functional nutritional supplement. It's, it has, it's one of the few multivitamin supplements that have fatty nutrients in them. I have Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back in the break. Enjoy. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, or if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got uh, Jeff Casper and Jonah Brindis coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about the deeper aspects of self, self growth, consciousness, energy, and self healing, particularly focusing on what they call the inner child. There's a really interesting study that came out a few years ago called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Studies, the ACEs study, that found that uh, almost all adver uh, uh, chronic degenerative diseases, long term chronic degenerative diseases, especially cancer, had a relationship to what are called uh, adverse childhood experiences. This is known as the ACEs study. And we underestimate the power and the importance of our upbringing in terms of our, how, our, how, well, how well or how not well we develop psychologically when it comes to our health. And I can always tell if there's a psychological issue going on. If people are supplementing with a nutritional supplement program or getting on a nutritional supplement program and uh, they notice that their health improves and then it plateaus, the chances are pretty good there's some psychological issues that are going on, some mental issues that are going on, even some spiritual issues that are going on or emotional issues that are going on. Or if people supplement, get on a supplement program, change the way they eat, they start exercising, but they still 
can't seem to get healthy, again, the chances are pretty good that they're dealing with some kind of a psychological or invisible or abstract health issue. And we marginalize these uh, at our own peril, especially if you're dealing with a health issue. So the inner child, the divine inner child, is, uh, as uh, Jeff and Jonah call it, a play, plays a really important role in how our body shows up, how our physio physiology shows up, uh, for better or worse, as we get older, we'll talk to Jeff and Jonah at the bottom of the hour. Their website, by the way, is transcodes.com, transcodes.com, or number 844-236-6010. If you'd like to chat about anything, and uh, we'll get your calls this segment. So before we get to break, we're talking about this idea about multivitamins uh, and essential fatty acids and phytonutrients and DEEK as I like to call it, the fatty vitamins, DEEK. Most multivitamins are not going to give you enough fatty nutrients. This is one of the advantages of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine above ordinary multivitamins is that you're getting DEEK. And you're also, uh, uh, if you use the Healthy Star Pack, you're also going to get um, some essential fatty acids. Now, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, there's no essential fatty acids. And I'm still amazed by folks who uh, understand the importance of nutrition, but either they don't understand the importance of EFAs, essential fats, or sometimes they haven't even heard of EFAs. Most people have heard of omega-3s and omega-6s, but um, there are people who haven't heard of this concept of essential, meaning you have to have them, fats. Those are two words that the average person doesn't put together in the same phrase or the same term, essential and fats, because we are fat phobic and because we don't understand chemistry, we think all fats are the same. Well, it turns out that EFAs or essential fats, there's only two of them, uh, alpha linolenic acid and alpha linoleic acid. Alpha linoleic acid is a type of omega-6 and alpha linolenic acid is a type of omega-3. They're not the same. Omega-6 and omega-3 are not equal to essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are, are, are subdivisions or subcategories of uh, omegas. There's lots of omegas. They're not all essential. There's only two essentials. And uh, the key is the essential, the word essential. It's like a fat that you have to have. Think about that. It's like a fat that's like a vitamin. And in essence, the power of these two unique and singular fatty acids is vitamin-like. You can call them vitamin fats. They're not vitamins technically, but they have that same kind of potency and that same kind of relevancy when it comes to health and that same kind of importance because they're not made by the body. They're found only in foods and even worse, they're easily broken down by processing. And I would, in my humble opinion, I would say that EFA deficiencies are way more common than anybody knows. And I can, one of the ways I can prove it to you or you can prove it to yourself is by doing a little survey among your friends and see how many people have dry skin or flaky skin or skin problems of any kind, but even something as benign and seemingly mild and seemingly as unimportant and cosmetic and superficial as dry skin can point back to an essential fatty acid deficiency. Fat cravings are another sign of an essential fatty acid deficiency. Go get yourself some Udo's Blend if, you, if you're the kind of person that can't stop eating the french fries, which is a lot of people, can't stop eating potato chips, can't stop eating corn chips, can't stop eating ice cream, what do all these foods have in common? Love your cheese, love your dairy. What do all these foods have in common? For you guys who love cheese, let me ask you something. If they took all the fat out of your cheese, do you think you'd still love it? Unlikely. If you love french fries and they took all the fat out of the french fries, you would still love it? Unlikely. It's not the French fries we love. It's not the ice cream we love. It's not the, it's not the cheese that we love and that we can't stop eating. It's the fat, especially the EFAs, the essential fatty acids. So go get yourself if you're one of those people that can't stop eating the ice cream or the cheese or the milk or you know fat, whatever. Everybody's got their favorite go-to fatty food. Get yourself on some essential fatty acid liquid, liquid because you got to have it concentrated, like Udo's Blend, which I've been talking about for years. It's not the only essential fatty acid liquid, by the way. I think it's the best, and I know Udo, and he is the guru of fats, and his uh, ethics are uh, of the highest highest standards. So I have I, I love Udo's blend, but get any kind of essential fatty acid liquid and drink four table or, or put do four tablespoons full of it, or just guzzle a bunch down. A bunch has to be a bunch, and then go look at some ice cream. I, just thinking about ice cream, if you do enough EFAs, is going to make you nauseous. 
Once you have enough fat, your body doesn't want more fat. And the reason we're craving it so much is because we're not getting the good fats. I should say once your body has enough good fat, your body doesn't want more fat. And once you have enough EFAs, and this is one of the first things that happens once people start supplementing on the ultimate EFAs, you notice you don't crave fatty foods as much. And then you notice your skin looks better. And then you notice your dry skin is going away. So these essential fatty acids are unspeakably important, and taking them is not enough because they're absorbed throughout the intestine. Lipids, fatty, fatty uh, nutrients are absorbed throughout the intestine. So that means if you have any intestinal problem, that's going to compromise your ability to process fats. Here's something else that's cool about the intestine and fats. Fats feed the intestine. Not only are fats absorbed in the intestine, but there's a special kind of fat, which I'm going to spend some time talking about, and we've talked about in the past, called a short fat or a short chain fat. A couple of, um, last week, I think, we talked about medium chain fats. Medium chain fats are used by the body really quickly. They're absorbed quickly. The body burns them for energy quickly. It doesn't store them. And then uh, the short fats, there's three sizes of fats, by the way, short, medium, and long. The long fats are the essential fatty acids in most fats. The medium chain fats, those are not found in a lot of foods, and those are used for energy, and they're not stored. But the short fats, those are stupendously fascinating and important. And one of the most important things about these short fats is they feed the intestine. Not only are they made in the intestine, by the way, they're made by bacteria in the intestine. They, technically, they're called short-chain fatty acids, and there's three of them. I'm going to spend some time with these. These short-chain fatty acids are not only made in the intestine by bacteria, which means if you have messed up gut bacteria, you're going to have a problem with that, but they also feed the intestine. They also energize intestinal cells, short-chain fats, particularly one super special one. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow on our next Bright Side episode. Jeff and Jonah coming up. Their website is trans, uh, transcodes.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24 7 on the archive page at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you, Peter, in the UK, for setting that up. We have a search engine up at, um, at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, have our archives at brightsideben.com, and lots of great health information, videos, and blog posts, and news stories at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben, and pharmacistben.com. And you can also, of course, purchase your longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, all formulated in my compound in pharmacy for healing wounds, for preventing post-surgical scarring, for dealing with traumas and, and uh, various skin health issues like acne and psoriasis. What I discovered was when you heal a wound, when you heal the skin, you beautify the skin, and healing equals beauty. Healing is synonymous with beauty. And that's the missing link, in my humble opinion, in the beauty business is we don't have made that connection, although we have a Truth Skin Health, Truth uh, Skin Health Inc. at truthtreatments.com, uh, truthtreatments.com, and check out our over 970 four and five star reviews. No accident there, folks, because all our Truth Treatments are made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, silicon, vegetable oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, and it's no accident that we have 950 plus four and five star reviews, all at truthreviewed.com. All right, I am looking forward to speaking to our next guests, plural. Uh, Yona Brindis is, and uh, her associate, uh, Jeff Casper, are energy workers. Their website is transcodes.com. They specialize in self-healing or talking about self-healing. They also do energy co uh, energy coaching, and they've got YouTube videos and a blog, uh, transcodes.com. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Yona Brindis and Jeff Casper. Good morning, Jeff and Yona. Good morning. Hi, Jeff. Hey, thanks, thanks, thanks for inviting Jeff. us to your awesome show. Definitely, yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you for being here. And I've never done, I don't think I've ever done, that I can recall, a, a double in, an interview with two people. So, I, I, so forgive me if I'm a little, if it's a little awkward to try to do this in a smooth way. Yona, this, I was on your uh, YouTube site and I guess Yona, you started this and then how does this, what is the relationship between you two guys? First of all, well, we have a family together. We live together. Ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> so okay. we've actually met through our own studies mm -hmm. in um, healing. That's how we got together. So we're working together. We're living together. Mm -hmm. 
and okay. living together. Your, part, your <laughs> life partners, your soul yeah. partners, life partners. Okay, got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. so I want to get into the specifics about transcodes, but you brought something. You just raised up an interesting point that what, what were some of the who are some of these uh, people you studied? Some of the teachers, or some of the authors, or some of the work that you studied before you got into this, or that you're still studying. Yes, it's a really long story, but a, a good story. Uh, and uh, both our stories are slightly different and yet so similar, uh, if I may speak for you as well. We both have a scientific background. We both got into uh, trying to figure out how life works, how health works, how performance works, mm. how the immune system works through the scientific path. I was on the chemical side of things. Similar to you, Ben, yeah. and mm-hmm. Jeff. I was the exercise physiology. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we both. I'm counseling now. Yeah, so yeah. And then I switched to computer science uh, at, a, at a time where I thought that maybe there's more, you know, uh, to, to, to be discovered there, you know, as far as like how all this is really functioning. Okay, mm-hmm. so as a chemist, you know, I have this like curiosity about really wanting to find out how things work. Mm-hmm. And that's then, you know, really the end of the rope. The more you find out about how things work in nature, the more you know or the more you realize how much you don't know. And I love it. That's so true. That's really the curiosity that has driven mm-hmm. both of us. And I, similar to you, became a public speaker very early on for nutrition, you know, mm. teaching people about all the contaminants that are in foods and uh, mm. work for a nonprofit organization that helped families with ADHD children, you know, because the research at the time already showed that you can, you know, change that, like 80% of that at least with improved nutrition and staying away from contaminants and um, drinking more water and, and all these little tweaks. And uh, for Jeff, it was more the, the physical, the side athletic level. side to it. Yeah, and then we both sort of saw that there was a strong power of thought component. I want to call mm. it this way here for a second. And obviously then, you know, this was, to, what was it, in the early 90s, got attracted to mindfulness and meditation mm-hmm. uh, and, and seeing how that can yeah. affect things. And obviously there is still a lot of research that needs to be done in these areas, but you, um, you guys sound like my doppelgangers. That's, that's, a, that's exactly. I mean, that was my path too. And, and the idea that you can be a, phys, a healthcare professional and study health and chemistry and physiology and really be good at it without knowing all of these things that you're talking about—the sort of woo-woo abstract ideas—really, right. it, it's kind of foolish, I think, in my humble opinion. So you guys are right on. I appreciate it. You'd be perfect for. You, you, ha- you should have your own show. For I, I don't know yeah, why you don't. But <laughs> you, you because that's exactly what we too. talk about here every day. Yeah. Uh, okay, and it's so- a battle. In the past, it's been a battle because, you know, like an uphill battle, you know, against this whole woo and new age mm-hmm. um, conception of yeah. uh, spirituality. And it's, it's so relieving now, even though some of these outer conditions, such as the COVID situation and so forth, are contributing to this. But isn't that consciousness yeah. too? Don't you think that there's well, a absolutely. real need, right? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. It's, it's yeah. like a blessing in disguise to a certain degree because people are forced to yeah. looking into the deeper stuff, into the deeper connection with themselves, yeah. into yeah. what can heal them. I mean, yeah. this, this, this Corona situation here is, is a gift for us to realize how much we as individual conscious souls can impact our own health. So the That's other way powerful. around, not just how our physical yeah. condition impacts our mental health, but also how our mental health or our spiritual health affects our physical condition. It's, um, okay. okay, so we don't, we don't uh, I wish we had so much time because you have so many great things on your site, so many great things to talk about. So the, I'm going to pick the top of the list and the most important things I think are yeah. one of the most important. And that's this idea of the inner child. The, mm-hmm. and, and the power that the inner child has over how our lives show up, for better or worse. It could go either way. I mean, yeah. the, and you call it the divine inner child. What, if, first of all, what does it mean? When I think of the inner child, I think of the, the, the child that still lives in us that, that is traumatized or uh, has been wounded or perhaps has been, ha, has been healed. Um, but you call it the, the divine inner child. What is the distinction between inner child and divine inner child? 
Is there one? So obviously, I mean, this is already coming through, right? We, we're combining a lot of different sciences, a lot of different treatments here, yeah, different, levels also. different practices. Yeah. So when we when we call something a certain way, we do this on purpose as coaches because it, we know the power of the mind. So if we help a person to reframe, reframe things in their mind, then that can also reframe the attitude and their whole entire uh, energetic uh, posture about it. So inner child is typically something scary for people. It's yeah. something. Mm. That makes them feel vulnerable, that makes them feel weak, and that triggers a lot of trauma memory in a person. So it's mostly sort of this part in us that is irrational and that bypasses our mind that does things, you know. Would this be the id? Would this be the id? It's linked to it, but it's more that... When you okay, hang about- on hang on to that thought, okay. Yona. We've got to take a commercial yeah. break. We're talking to uh, Yona Brindis and her partner, uh, jo- uh, Jeff Casper. Website is transcodes.com. We'll be back with more of Jeff and Yona on the Bright Side right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Jeff Casper and Yona Brindis. Their website is transcodes.com. And uh, Yona, before we went to break, you were talking about this distinction. Well, I was asking about the id and the uh, and the inner child. If you can talk a little bit about that real quick, uh, if the id is the inner child, and also what you mean by divine inner child. Yeah, so by the id, most people understand this vulnerable or this irrational part of themselves and that triggers a lot of resistance in a person it's mm-hmm. something that we don't want to feel you know we don't want to throw a tantrum or um you know be angry at people there are certain things that we associate with our id with this like sort of animalistic nature within mm-hmm. our own psyche that we perceive as as weak, as vulnerable. And by reframing that, it's just really a coaching thing, you know, to to call this something that reminds us more of uh, this uh, part in us that is has this sort of innocence and divine nature that children have that is so strong, mm. you know, that makes kids stand up and try again, even if they fell down a hundredth time learning how yeah. to walk. But- you know, There's something it's, about it when you look at a child, you just can't stop looking like a little kid. Yes, you just, exactly. yes. right? It's that. Yes. That's what you mean by the divine part, the divine yes. inner child. Yes. Got it's, it. Okay. The beauty, of and it's yeah. the beauty. It's it's what Carl Jung calls the wondrous inner mm-hmm. child. Okay, uh, so there is this the it part, which is more sort of referring to the. Uh, the, the, the well, the immature aspect, but then there's also another component of the inner child, uh, and that is the one that is actually fully connected with wow. this divine beauty. That is that why angels are always learn. that's angels are babies. They always picture angels as babies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that what a lot of now? times in their history they have been depicted as, as, as yeah. babies? Yeah. So there's that, just, just the pure purity about this, and that's why when we do inner child work with people on this energetic level, um, it, a lot of it is really working against their their, their beliefs. Well, the beliefs that they have about it, okay? Yeah. So because because that triggers mm. this this trauma response and this not wanting to feel. Well, what do we remember as a child? We remember the pain. We remember the powerlessness. Mm. We remember the, mm. the incompetence, really, right. in not being able to make our own choices. Well, and then I, what I, happens is you oh, – go, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. I'll, well, I'll what take, happens, like what, yeah, what Yona was mentioning there is you get – when you have these traumas and it creates this loop in us where instead of facing it, we go into a defense mechanism. That's where the inner child and that kind of id-like state comes, where uh, we don't feel connected. We feel pain. We feel that scared. Defend that defensive. It, we defend. Yeah. We, we hide. Defend. We run. We freeze. Uh-huh, we defend. Uh-huh. So by reframing that and looking at what either energies there, what scripts are there, what thoughts or beliefs are there, once those get reprogrammed or let go, depending upon what it is, and you notice the for lack of a better word, the immaturity of it, then all of a sudden you can reprogram and let that child know, hey, we're here. You know, yeah, Yona, you said, Yona said a really interesting word. You said powerlessness. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's our experience as children for a lot of us. I had that, yes. I know. Mm-hmm. It's a sense of like you, you weren't in control of your own mm-hmm. destiny kind of thing. How is what's happening in the world today kind of a reflection of that kind of fundamental sense of powerlessness and helplessness? 
I see a huge connection there. Mm-hmm. But this is something that with the kind of work that we do, we call this truth training, by the way, Ben, which I find very interesting too, that mm-hmm. you call your products very similar. Um, we help people to see the larger connections, okay? So there's an, there's a power in zooming out a little bit and getting detached from, you know, the inner child state is this like total attachment style, right? Uh, where you where you can't think about anything else but the lollipop that you want, okay? Uh-huh. Or the TV show or whatever. You get uh-huh. total attached. One pointed okay? focus on the lollipop. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's irrational, obviously. You know, as a two-year-old, you literally think you, you're going to die world. if you don't get it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or then the more traumatic aspect, you know, feeling loved, uh, you know, or... Uh, not feeling enough love, not getting uh, my needs met, uh, creates the opposite attachment. So we as humans, our psyche is attached to these pains and fears that we have because we don't want to feel that way. And most people don't understand how this actually runs their entire life. Their drive in life is to avoid what they don't want to feel. And what they Uh don't want to feel is lays you know, that lies in their past. So uh, energy work helps to bring uh, past, present, and future self together and and see the larger picture. You're basically helping the person to zoom out and we're helping them to connect. Now, with the the, the corona situation or this, this, this public health problem that we have right now, it's very similar. But you have to look beyond the pure material standpoint of health and mm. well-being and existence. You have to, and this is where the spiritual component comes in. If mm. you zoom out of like, okay, you know, I'm I'm not just a bag of meat. I'm not just, uh-huh. you uh-huh. know, like DNA yeah. and cells and all that. I'm more than that. Right. You know, I'm a consciousness. I'm 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 a true self. I have sovereignty. I am not like sort of my spiritual inner child. <laughs> I am a spiritual grown up, or at least, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that is then what can be perceived uh, sort of as purpose in life. You recognize that there is just like how we go through all our de- developmental stages on a biological level, on a psychological level. There's also a an emotional and spiritual development that we go through. And mm. that then allows us to recognize this the, the, the connection here. If we only see ourselves as a mm. as a bag of meat, mm. all right, mm. then we must be scared. Mm-hmm. Then we must be scared. Then the fear of Because we're gonna die, we're gonna fall apart. Entropy and the gravity exactly. yeah. it yeah. reminds us of exactly that state. Mm-hmm. Where we were powerless wow. when we were two years old, we yeah. were powerless. Okay, and working with the inner child and develop, it's a process. It's not an event, right? Not not to to create the wrong impression here. It's, it's not an epiphany. Ongoing. It's not a kind of epiphany that you have. No, it, even you if you have, have those, you have lots yeah, of those right. in the process, but. Right. You know, as humans, uh, we have anywhere between 200 to 300 unconscious beliefs. And and they've been, the older we are, Mm. you know, the stronger they're embedded in our core programming. So Mm -hmm. we kind of have to undo them bit by bit. And we call this reparenting when it comes directly Mm. to these inner child aspects. We go in sort of as the present and the future self of our inner child um, and help our inner child to feel empowered, to feel safe, to feel loved. And by training this, by basically creating such something that we call energetic muscle memory, mm. we're reprogramming our inner self. And then when we are actually in a 3D situation, right? Yeah, we're it'll come up. Y- yeah, yeah. Right. it's yeah. easier for us you to practice. You practice, that's why... That's why you that's practice. You have, yeah, yeah. So listen, we only have about a minute here. I'm just going so fast. Give us, give me, give our listeners one thing they can do to help deal with what's going on in the world, to help, to help deal with their own demons, to help improve their lives from an inner divine inner child perspective. One thing they can do. I can't really separate it from just the divine self or inner self, but it, uh, the inner child self. To fo- shift the focus from the fear yes. of dying or from the fear of not being enough or not having enough or not being healthy enough to focusing on how I can empower myself, how I can empower my body, how can I empower my immune system mm. to help itself, mm-hmm. to strengthen myself from within. There's always these two, the internal and the external. If we can't change the condition, 
that would obviously be the first, you know, the easiest pick, and that's where the ego gravitates to us too. But if we can't change the outer condition, then we have yeah. to change the inner condition. That's great. And that's where nutrition and all that energy work, Supporting even mental yourself. health, everything, yeah, yeah. you know, exercise comes in. We have to make ourselves stronger so that yeah. we change our inner condition. I love it. Be our own. I, I'd say it called being our own health authority. Being yeah, our own yeah, authority. Wonderful. Take, like that. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. how I look at it. We, we're, so, yeah. we're so conditioned to look outside ourselves, like you say, to look at yeah. the world or to look at authorities, to look at other people, to have help. But we have so much power inside of us. That, that's a very, very inspiring message and a very apropos message for this crazy time that we're living in. So how do people get a hold of you, Jeff and Jonah? Yona? Um, through the website. Um, they can also go on YouTube um, amongst younger p- people. That's probably or Facebook. So it's all trans codes. Uh, you know, trans, trans codes. What is trans? Co- what is trans codes? Yeah. What is the trans? Like to transcend? It's the transcend, the transformation, the translate. Uh-huh. We basically trans. teach people how to communicate with their divine inner self, so that they can better understand their own in a signaling and messaging you know and that is the most powerful guidance that a person can receive the one from awesome within wisdom. themselves it's so yeah. awesome because we always carry that with us at all times jeff and, yeah. and yona thank you so much for being on the bright side the website's transcodes.com transcodes.com take care guys have a beautiful day thank you for having thank us you. all right god bless okay. that's it and uh we're out of time so tune in tomorrow we'll continue talking about fats versus water fat solubility versus water solubility versus water solubility and short chain fatty acids have a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later folks bye for now